If you are the proud owner of a LEGO Mindstorms EV3, NXT, or CX, or even power functions, then you know that they churn through batteries like crazy. So why waste a bunch of money on batteries when you can power your LEGO gadgets directly from the wall? So one AA is 1.5 volts, but if you put six of them in series, that's 9 volts. Therefore, all we need is a steady 9 volt power supply that can power the EV3, NXT, or whatever and all of its motors. To make things even better, you probably already even have one, and if you don't, Goodwill sure does. So all you'll need for this project are two alligator clips, preferably red and black, to tell the difference between negative and positive, any kind of tape, a pair of scissors, and a 9 volt power supply that's capable of outputting at least 2 amps of current. These next two things are optional, but still recommended. A multimeter and a pair of wire strippers, especially the multimeter. So, about the power supply, it obviously needs to be 9 volts, and capable of supplying at least 2 amps of current, and sometimes it's written in milliamps, so it would be 2000 milliamps. It also must be, and I mean must be, a switching power supply, not a linear power supply with a big heavy transformer in it. I will explain why in a minute, but first let me help you find one. Here are some examples of linear power supplies. They are bulky and very heavy for their size, thanks to the big transformer they contain. Sometimes they'll even say transformer right on the nameplate. Here are some examples of switching power supplies, and they are slim and very light for their size. Sometimes they'll even say switching power supply or switch mode power supply right on them. The reason why you gotta use a switching power supply is because linear power supplies are completely unregulated. For example, you can clearly see that this linear power supply is rated at 12 volts, yet when I measure it, it's around 17 and a half. If this power supply was 9 volts, it would output around 14, which is too high for any LEGO product. Without going into RMS voltages and how power supplies work, the output voltage of linear power supplies will fluctuate depending on load. The higher output voltage compensates for the voltage drop caused by the load drawing current, up to a certain extent. With switching power supplies, the output voltage remains the same no matter the load, but again, only up to a certain point. You can see that the output voltage of this 12 volt switching power supply is 12 volts with no load on it. Even if I connect a load, the voltage stays the same. And that's what LEGO Mindstorms needs. A stable supply voltage, but of 9 volts, not 12 volts. And I know there's gonna be people out there who are gonna say, Well, LEGO Mindstorms has voltage regulators in it. If the input voltage is too high, they're gonna be dissipating more power than they should be and overheat. And if the input voltage drops down too low, then the brick will just shut down. So once you have your 9 volt 2 plus amp switching power supply, go ahead and cut the end of it off. I suppose I lied to you in the title because technically you are modifying this power supply. Next, separate the wires and strip both of their ends. I'm using wire strippers to do this, but really you can use a knife or a pair of scissors to do it. All you gotta do is just get the copper wire exposed. Now we gotta find out which wire is the positive and which wire is the negative. 99% of the time, the wire with the white stripes on it is the positive. The other unmarked one is the negative. If your two wires are red and black, the red is the positive and the black one is the negative. You can use a multimeter to really make sure you got the right polarity. After that, go ahead and connect a red alligator clip to the positive and a black one to the negative. And don't forget to give the exposed metal bits a quick wrap in some kind of tape just to make sure that they don't touch each other. After that, you've done it. Now, let's go see it in action. In the following footage, you're gonna see a not so well drawn plus and minus sign that shows where the alligator clips go. So here it is connected to the EV3. And it goes the same way with the NXT. And with the RCX, it's a little bit different.
And you can even use it on power functions too. That's right, you can even use it on your Control Plus hubs. I suppose I should also mention that this thing we just built can be used to power anything else that runs off of 9 volts, whether that be 6 AA's in series or a 9 volt battery. So that's about it for this one. If you're interested in learning more, I will post some links in the description that go into real detail about the differences between linear and switching power supplies. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.